Hey folks, I was just thinking as I was loading up my Call of Cthulhu the Necropolis uh, a video that, you know, if somebody's actually searching through YouTube, they don't want to know what happens in the Necropolis. They don't care if it gets spoilers. So well, I tried to leave spoilers. I did. I left pretty much spoilers out of the the, the first uh, video. I'll do a part two. Uh, talking about the, the game itself because it starts out well first you introduce everybody because it's a demo we turn to learn the game and stuff and I introduce myself a bit but uh, they all play um, uh, specific people that are within this party that doing a dig in, in Egypt in in November of 1924 I think it is uh, so it's a 1920s Cthulhu and um, <clears throat> excuse me uh, they uncover a doorway, there's a block block, and they rig something up to pull it up, right? So everybody goes down these 13 steps into uh, the crypt. And the way it starts out is uh, the block that was blocking the doorway that's been lifted up falls back down. And what I like to do is, um, say, you probably on the first, you know, walk down the 13 steps into the crypt, into the, you know, there's a little dispute about, you know, treasure and future and all that kind of stuff, right? And uh, as I, I talk through that nice and smooth and easy, I, I come down with my arms on the table. Bam! And I say, you can't see, you can't hear, you can't breathe. Full insanity. And so I introduce the insanity mechanic. And then we kind of discuss the fact that this boulder had fallen down, so your ears are ringing. It's completely black. And there's dust up in your nose and in your mouth. And, you know, my little things had to go. Well, that's how I start, start the scenario, trying to be a, you know, dynamic, that kind of thing. And so one of, the, <clears throat> one of the players has you know, four candles and someone has matches and somebody's got a cigarette and a cigar and that kind of thing. So they can make some little bit of light. Um, and uh, they do. So sometimes they light lots of candles, but they only last for an hour. <laughs> and they burn out. Uh, but most of the uh, this party, you know, the last one, uh, they kept down to one or two candles at a time. <clears throat> Give me. Um, and, and then they start you know, searching around, right? There's some rules you make to see if you can recognize that there are um, mythos glyphs on the back of the stone. Um, you can dig around on the sides of the, the passageway because there's a there's a, a schematic story kind of thing there about the dark pharaoh. Um, and there are four um, pockets in the stone work there. Um, that are covered over with the plaster and painted over, but the, because of the cracks and stuff, you know, you can peel out and, and dig in there. And there's these little doggy mummies in there. Uh, nothing really special, just these four doggy mummies. At the far end of the scenario, you, you can see, well, they make, uh, at this point, did they make a torch? In the hallway, they made a torch at one point. Um, and so, you know, they can, but the torch, you see, it must be the candles. There's some light reflecting in the back of the hallway, so they'll go to them this way. Well, the archaeologist went to go investigate. Um, everybody is, you know, follows along, but you know, he took off. He had some broken furniture. There's a, a small chest there. It is um, solid gold. It's very heavy uh, and ornate. Uh, inside, just some glass beads, though. And, but off to the side is a hole in the wall because in the plaster around certain doorways and stuff, the plaster is thin enough that you can break through. So somebody had broken through a, a hallway. So it's small enough for a person, an adult, to climb through. Uh, or crawl through rather so rather than just saying that i, I just kind of know it's about so wide and you know so tall so you can tell you can, yeah you can crawl through that and so the uh, archaeologist says, stay here and he'll type off for himself eventually the rest of the party comes through because i remember they have the they definitely have the uh torch at this point um and they come into the first room i know there's gold and everything and all kinds of stuff scattered everywhere but some some pushed out of the way so there's a little pathway that goes almost straight through uh, another path that goes off to another side. There's a door over there. It's covered with a big stone. A couple of statues over there. Um, and there's a doorway across from you that's been broken open. And uh, the uh, crew chief <laughs> sucks stuff in his pockets with stuff. <laughs> and uh, the archaeologist goes to check out the door of the statues. Everybody else goes to check out the doorway across from them. So I've got a split party situation, not too dark because they're just separated by half a room kind of deal, but they go into the other room. They say, got frescoes on one side, frescoes on the other. It's an altar over here with an upside down onk with these sun-like sprinkles around them, actually tentacles. But I try to, you know, push away from that because that's called Cthulhu, so the first thing I think of tentacles. And uh, the archaeologist is checking out the door. It's a big, huge stone door, just like the front of the, um, the tomb. Front of the tomb 
And uh, but next to them are two statues. They're actually human bodies that have been stood up with a spear thrust through them, and their heads have been replaced, one with an alligator and the other with a uh, jackal. Uh, so there's some Sandy Rolls going on with that. And while that's going on, the other troop goes in, and there's Sandy Rolls based on looking at the, the frescoes and trying to read the hieroglyphics and that kind of stuff. And uh, in this room with the upside-down onk is um, a mat laid out. And on top of this mat is a body. Well, not a body, but a skeleton now. It's been there for like you know, 12 years. Actually, longer than that. Well, no, my God. But uh, there's a body there. It's got a leather coat. It's got a satchel. Inside the satchel is the journal I talked about in the other video. Uh, inside there's his passport. He's a German uh, investigator, archaeologist. He and a buddy of his were here. They found the way in. They got locked in. Uh, they're trying to find their way out. He's got a stick of dynamite in his satchel. Um, and uh, his buddy got killed. Nobody wanted him to go in here. You know, that kind of stuff, right? There's like four or five entries in the journal that actually give you a, a demo of in the scenario so the players can read out, that kind of thing. But he's laying there dead. His chest has been bashed in because uh, all the ribs, you know, broken in kind of thing. Um, and he's had a skull fracture. Uh, somewhere along here, the archaeologist goes back to go with everybody else because he's all this stuff. And, he tries to do his archaeology thing on a few things. They, they pick up some bits and pieces of stuff, some more sandy rolls. Um, the uh, crew chief picks up the satchel um, and the journal. He tries reading it at one point, but oh, he knew German. Uh, they eventually give it to the linguist who knows German so he can translate and they get the all information from that. He had, he had tucked the stick of dynamite into his pocket before everybody else had got their shoes. Because he would just check out the body while everybody else was still... Bring out these frescoes. And he looks at me and says, I got my pocket, take out the, the journal in my arm. There's some jewelry and stuff in there. But oh, he was really, really uh, concerned about something happening with the satchel. So he kind of dumps it out. <laughs> right? And that's when he picks this up and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> they ask if any of the jewel, the dilettante, who's again thinking mythos stuff, that maybe there's some of this jewelry. Ask if there's any that's matching. And I you know, just rolled, oh, who knows? And sure enough, there is. There's some matching stuff there. So she puts it on, but she's thinking she's going to have to do some kind of um, mythos ceremony to get them out of this place. Um, while this is going on, the bad guy comes out. So they hear this thump and the doorway comes crashing down. So they start freaking out. They come check out what happens. The big bad guy's there. He's like, a werewolf, but you know, big, huge human with this uh, golden dog head, and he attacks. And again, with this whole new stuff, these guys got like 20, 25, maybe 30 percent to hit, but the PCs are all like 75, 80, 90. You know, it's a, a no contest, so he gets shot twice. He's only got 11 hit points. Down he goes. Now, if he does hit you, he's got like a 200 strength, so he does like 3d6 damage. So he could put somebody down on one hit. But again, if you shoot him before he gets to you, he's down, he's dead. And that's why I had this whole regeneration thing and had it going back in my head, back in my mind. Okay, make sure you regenerate up. But the first time I think I just chose a point to have him come back up. But this time he's actually counting off rounds. He goes, well, the monsters, they, they book into the room he came from. There's a sarcophagus there. They put some stuff together, again, more sandy rolls, uh, more information on this whole dark pharaoh thing. Uh, there's a couple of oars there. One one guy picks up the oar. There was an axe and a sword from the original guards. A couple of guys have got those. Um, and uh, they search the room. Nothing there, but there's a doorway. They go into the doorway. This is the back room. There's a model of, the, of a city there and some other stuff and more things. They do a search roll. They find a uh, stone uh, box. They can't get it out, so it takes a couple of them actually to a few rooms, a few rounds to get it out. Um, and so this is still ticking by for the, the guy to get uh, regenerated back up. And uh, so they pull it out, they open it up, and it's got the, the five canopic jars. Well, normally there's four. There's a fifth one that's got upside down onk. And so somebody for sure is thinking there's something wrong with that one. They grab it, pull it out, axe, drop. And that's the one with the heart beating in it, you know. So they, then there's Sandy Rolls. They have the heart beat a couple times as it falls apart. 
on the floor there. And so that, that kills the monster, right? And that was I think the round or the round before I was going to have him come back. So a quick shortcut there to there to take that, but I get, but they still have to get out, right? And uh, when they first ran into the monster, the Pucky Kid says, "Okay, I'm done." Takes off, and uh, he has the torch. They're going by candles now. Um, at some point through this whole thing, the Del Tante, when uh, the linguist had taken the axe and he was doing something with it, that's when the Del Tante, you know took the uh, journal from him and then she went to the front and used a torch to burn it up um, and she, she's got the jewelry on so she's trying to make mythos rolls to try and uh, you know do some kind of incantation to get the door open uh, so they're doing that while these guys are finding the coptic jars and taking care of the real monster that kind of thing so nothing here nothing in the room they went to the first the second room nothing there back to the first room nothing there back to the hallway um, and eventually get around to the fact that the cruise fed stick of dynamite. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I the, in the rules, then the rules that got the rules about you know making rules to have the dynamite work properly. And sure enough, they make the right rules. They take the time, make the right rules. It blows up, and it's enough to shift the the block out of the door when they get out. So successful, successful run. Nobody lost a lot of uh, sanity. And we lost a bunch at once. Um, uh, all in all, you know, a fun time. But that was uh, my second running of the Necropolis Call of Cthulhu.